Welcome to the Misfit One Lifestyles with Elizabeth Colon. She will awaken and connect with your Misfit One. Are you tired of the ups and downs in your life? Are you ready to live a healthy lifestyle once and for all? We are talking about all aspects of your life. Being fit is not just physical. It's also your mind and soul. Learn how to take steps in your life to move towards your goals. Elizabeth's goal is for everyone listening to the sound of her voice to get fit. Let's get focused, let's get intentional, and let's transform. Now here's your host, Elizabeth Colon. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Misfit One Lifestyles with your host, Elizabeth Colon, also known as Misfit One. Check it out. You know, the summer is right around the corner and that's where we need to get on that plane, get in that car, get in your RV, whatever you want to do, you're going to have to travel. Let's get ready to travel. And so in order for me to help you with this, because I brought in an expert, an expert in travel, Mallory Dumont. How are you doing, girlfriend? I'm wonderful. How are you? I am good. Thank you. Listen. I am so excited to be talking to you today because you have a amazing, amazing travel booking service that is so unique. So let's talk about that. First of all, tell the people who you are and a little bit about yourself. Sure. My name is Mallory and I am a wife and I'm a mother of two children. They will be uh, three and six years old soon. So uh, life is never dull or boring around here. My husband and I are also foster parents um, with the state of North Carolina. So at any given time, we're always welcoming um, another little one into our home. Um, Last year, we were fortunate enough to have a one-year-old little boy spend the year with us and he was able to go uh to Walt Disney World twice with us. Um so that was really fun. Oh, Our- that's so fun. Yes. Um we love to travel. We love to get out and see the world and we love to take our kids to do it. Um so I'm happy and excited to be here and talk about uh travel with you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, listen, you guys heard that she has a three year old and a six year old. And she's also a foster parent that could have a kid at any day. Now that's a busy woman. That's busy. Right? That's it's fun. Busy. It is so, fun. I, I remember those days. My kids, as everybody know, are grown, grown, like range from 34 to 25. So they are grown. But we did do a lot of traveling when they were little. They travel a lot now because traveling, I think, is a very important part of your life. Um, let's talk about your company and, and tell me, I know you started it about five years ago. Yes. So I'm a part of travel nation, which, uh, began in, in 2012 with the president and founder, Adam Duckworth out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And I joined the industry about five years ago as a travel advisor. So I've been, uh, working in the travel industry for about five years now. Um, I've won several awards in the industry, but my favorite part of what I get to do is to help people, uh, take the stress out of traveling. So whether it's planning their trip, navigating a new destination, um, going somewhere for the first time, or just taking their family somewhere they've never been together. Um, it's always fun to see them get to go out and experience something that they probably wouldn't if they didn't have a helping hand. Yeah. And that, that that's really cool that you said that. And we're going to dive into all of those things, because I think that is very important in the industry of um, travel, right? It's some people see it as, oh, yay. And some people say, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> right. It's, it's oh, yeah. Different two types of people. But you kind of talked a little bit about it. But really, what inspired you to to get in this industry of travel as a career? Um, I, I say the seeds for this were planted many, many years ago when I was much younger with my parents taking us on family vacations and making it a priority in our family to see new places and to, um, you know, to take that time throughout the year for your, your mental health, your physical health, for all things regarding staying healthy and strong to take a break and go somewhere and do something new together and to foster those bonds with each other. Um, so definitely it 
started years ago with my family. And then as I grew older, the passion just remained. And from planning mission trips with my church to planning school group trips for students when I was a teacher, um, all of these different things led me to the point where I said, this is something that brings me joy and others joy. And if I can do it full time, then I would love to do that. And so I just jumped in head first. I love that. I love that, which is cool because I think you you made a valid point about as a kid, the memories that we make. Um, because like I said, my kids have, I have scraped and saved because I think traveling is very important. I really do. I think it's important for us to see how other cultures live, how they are, you know, are are living their daily lives. What does that look like? You know, other than just seeing it on TV or reading in the book, I want you to have that full experience. So um, let me ask you, what is some of the hardest things though? for people when they have to travel? What have you found that is like, oh my God, please handle this for me? <laughs> um, I would say the the hardest thing for people to, to swallow when it comes to traveling sometimes is the cost of it. That, that, that can shock some people, especially post COVID and post pandemic. We live in a world where the demand is high enough for travel, our travel partners and suppliers to um, charge what they do for premium experiences. And so people are a little shocked that gone are the days of the last minute deal. Um, and now are the days of planning far in advance so that you can get the best price on travel experiences. So I would say the, the budget portion of it does shock people. So where I step in with that is helping them navigate the best times of year to travel, uh, where the deals can be found, where those discounts and promotions are running so that families can afford to go on these trips and have these memories with their families. Well, can you give us some like tips, three tips on for getting the best deals of traveling? Yes. You know, the combination of the activities, I, I think you said kind of one of them, but can you give us like tips for that? Because that's a big deal. Yeah, definitely. So uh, the number one tip for people trying to book travel on a budget would be number one is plan ahead. Make sure you're not trying to wait till the last minute. So if you want to go somewhere, try to plan those trips as much in advance as you possibly can, especially if you're looking at something that's popular, like a cruise, for example, because they're filling up their ships now. Cruise lines have no issue selling out their ships. So the last minute deal doesn't really exist. So if you want to get the lowest price, you want to be booking those when they open their itineraries for the year. Uh, so booking ahead is definitely one of the best ways to save money on your travel and then choosing the time of year that you go. So if you're able to travel during the school year or if you're able to travel when um not everybody else is. We call those in some destinations shoulder season. So it's not your peak season where everybody else is traveling. It's just on the edge of it right before it gets busy or right after it gets, it's super busy. Uh, there's some deals to be found there as well. And then the third tip, I would say use a travel advisor. Um, some travel advisors charge fees and that might seem like a self-serving um, you know, comment to make, but some travel advisors charge fees uh, and some do not. I am a travel advisor that does not charge a fee. So suppliers pay me a commission when I book your trip and help you travel. Um, so you get all of that help and expertise and I'm looking out for the pricing for you and you don't have to pay any extra for it. So that's, you know, whether it's me or another trusted travel advisor that, you know, I would say enlist their help because they're looking at this every day. Yeah, you know, what's so funny is I felt so seen when you say, don't wait to the last minute. <laughs> I do it too. So. Um, let me tell you how how horrible and um, entitled or open. And I, I, I'm i trying to say the nicest word I can for my child. I, my youngest child, she traveled, like we, we've all traveled, but she was, of course, the one with us, the latest, right? She right. Was, for her graduation, we did seven days in Rome, seven days in Paris, but their whole life, they every summer, that was my thing, cruises, because I was a single parent, didn't have a lot of money. I made I made payment, payment, mm -hmm. payments, payments. And then once we got there, all the food and stuff was covered, right? It's so easy. It's so much easier. So I was like, that was the way to go. So they've been doing that since they were like four, right? Right. So I'll wake up. Mallory would text from my daughter, my youngest, 
who says, um, she's tw she'll be 25. She goes, hey, I think we should go backpacking in Africa. I say, wow, that's a great idea. When do you want to go? Tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, tell why? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. And Tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, I, I, ain't, I, I can't. I, yeah. I, that ain't gonna work. Yeah, I can't. No. <laughs> I can't make it tomorrow. But we can plan on that. But you know what? This little heifer of mine goes. And then she will she will FaceTime me where she's at, like so I can go with her somewhere. But I I think that planning is like that was the only way I could travel. Period. Right. Period. Like that's it. I gotta we gotta book this for 2025. Yeah. <laughs> we'll pay $100 a month until <laughs> but we're gonna make it happen. <laughs> One way or another, we're going to get so there. I think that's the best tip ever is to plan ahead. Can you um, share with us one of the most memorable experiences that you have put together for someone? Oh, that's a tough one. So there's, oh, there's a few. I've got a, I've got a family who's traveling to France next year and they're doing an ultimate trip to France, but the dad is a, he's a cyclist. And so they've planned their entire trip around ending where the end of the Tour de France ends so that they can see the finale of that race. So that, I know that's going to be spectacular, but they've planned way ahead for that. So that's for 2025. Um, I would say some of the more memorable trips that I've had the chance to help people plan hit more on a somber note because some of the trips I've helped people plan, whether they knew it or not, were some of the last memories they were able to make with a loved one who was able to travel on that trip. So a lot of the times I'm able to be a part of these special moments with people. And it's such an honor to help plan the details of a trip, whether they know it or not, is going to end up being such a special part of these core memories that they carry for the rest of their lives. Um, and there's been multiple trips that I've helped people plan. Um, and and I, th I would say that multi-generational family trips are probably amongst my favorite ones to help plan because we all know that it's worth it, but it's difficult to get to planning with grandma, grandpa, mother-in-law, father-in-law, cousin, aunt, uncle, when you try to get the whole family involved. But once you do, and those core memories are made, yeah. it, it's so worth it. It's so worth it. You are so true. We did that for my 58th birthday. We, I had my family, I'm from Texas. They all flew out. This was, this, my cousin did this and I love her dead death. And uh, my kids helped, but it was so crazy because my family is country, girl, I'm country, country, like country, raised <laughs> on the farm. Like I was the original Ellie Mae before there was a hee haw, all that stuff, right? There you go. Um, they had, some of them had never even flown on a plane. Wow. But they came and we had one location. They talk about it to this day. That was for my 50th birthday. And it's still one of the big highlights because it was everybody. My my dad, my, you know, my great, great aunts, my whole family, all the way to my grandbaby and all the cousins and nephews. So I see that. I didn't even think about that until you said that. But that is so true. Mm -hmm. It is definitely one of the most memorable trips. And we travel all the time. But that is definitely one of the most memorable ones because it was everybody. Right. So that's very cool. Um, let me ask you this. Okay. You've been in this industry for five years, right? Or, or more. Professionally you, five. Professionally, but, right. Yeah. <laughs> but Which, before that, yeah. Yeah, you've been doing it, right? Can you tell what, what some of the changes have been in, in the industry of traveling and what opportunities and challenges you've had since then, if, if they were in? Definitely. So my tenure professionally as a travel advisor includes the pandemic. So we definitely saw some intense changes uh, during and after the pandemic. That's probably been the biggest uh, earthquake to our industry. Um, the cruise lines especially were hit so hard and were, <laughs> yeah, they were shut down for more than 15 months. And uh, 
gosh, I can't, I can't imagine what they went through on their end. I only know what we went through on our end as commission based, as commission based advisors and people not being able to complete their trips means that there's no paycheck. Right. Um, So for us as advisors, that was definitely challenging, but some of our very, very good partners like Celebrity Cruise Lines and Royal Caribbean um, and Disney Destinations, they protected our commission through the pandemic. So trips that were booked and had to be canceled, they still paid advisors. Um, So we'll be forever loyal and grateful to those companies who stood beside us and behind us uh, during that time. But so the pandemic itself was definitely a challenge, but post pandemic, you still have people who retain some of that fear of traveling, of getting sick, of those things. And so helping people walk through that and take proper precautions so that they can safely and confidently travel and navigate different environments and still enjoy themselves because it is still possible. Um, I think that that's definitely been a challenge. And, and then it, I'm yeah. Because I have yeah. a and I'm going to forget because I'm old. But let me <laughs> ask you this, because I am one of those people that really changed. I told you that we took cruises you know, forever. But once the pandemic hit, I will never go. I'm not going to say never because never a very harsh word, but only way I would go on a carnival or a big, huge trip again, Mm -hmm. if if I'm taking my grandbabies. Right. Right. So I, we still go on a cruise, but we go on a very small one, no more than 250 people, or, you know, the very small ones. So mm-hmm. I am one of those people that is like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that again. Like, I don't even, I can't believe I did that in the first place, but I'm definitely not doing right. that. Right. So how do you walk us through that? How do you get us back on the horse and say, <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends. The first question is, when I'm talking with somebody in that position is, do they want to get back on the horse or not? Maybe they've discovered a new way of traveling since then that they don't really want to return to the old way. Um, But with cruising in particular, because most of the time it is related to cruising, I've cruised pre and post pandemic. And I cruised right when they started back, when the ships were first sailing back out, I got back on there um, when they were still requiring a mask and everything. So Um, and I would say that that my post pandemic cruise experience far exceeds my pre pandemic cruise experience as far as levels of cleanliness, staff service, attention to detail, uh, food service, all of those things on the cruises I've experienced. And I'm but I'm picky and I'm picky for my clients too. Um, mm-hmm. has far exceeded what I'd experienced before. So, you know, they've updated in most of the ships and especially the newer ones, they've got updated air filtration systems. They've got updated water treatment systems. They've got updated cleaning protocols. Everything has changed in how they operate these mega ships to make sure they stay clean and safe for their guests and their passengers. Because I mean, on one note, yes, they want everyone to be safe and healthy for the sake of being safe and healthy. But also we have to think that this is how they support their families. And so they're not going to risk it by having a norovirus outbreak or a COVID-19 outbreak on their ships. Um, In January, I was able to be on the inaugural sailing for the new Royal Caribbean's Icon of the Seas, the largest ship at sea. Oh, girl, talk (laughs) about that. We saw it. Uh, We we have people that went on it and they think it's, Amazing. But tell, can you talk to us about that from a professional side? From, from yeah. a professional standpoint, it is the coolest ship I've ever seen in my life. It has all the bells and whistles, everything you want or could ever need on a cruise ship for every age. So if you're taking a multi-generational family on a ship, that's the one. Because number one, there's so much space. If, there, if you want to get lost and get away from everybody... You could never be found for the whole week of the trip. If you want to get away from everyone and they never see you again until you get off the ship, you can do it. But if you want those shared experiences around things that everyone enjoys, like family friendly entertainment, um, acrobat shows, uh, you know, they have a whole area dedicated just for kids, water stuff with food and entertainment in that same area. So you don't have to leave and go to a different part of the ship, the kids clubs, the teen centers, they're all phenomenal. There's uh, definitely no shortage of things to do. And the whole ship, the staff, the crew, everything was just top notch. And we, I mean, everything was so new and it was still so fresh. It felt so clean. 
And I love a new ship because it's also clean and fresh. Well, not all of us get to experience that. We had <laughs> one, of the, one of our ships that we went on, we saw we was traveling somewhere. We was in St. Croix, Croix in the Br British Virgin Islands and mm -hmm. saw one of the ships. Just so It was so old. But I was like, she's, that was the first one we went on. And right. She, Kick it. She looked good. She out there enjoying and it was so and, and it was so awesome. My kids love those experiences. They they learned how to eat exotic foods where we yes. were. Yes. Um, I remember we was trying to taste uh have escargot for the first time. Yes. We were discussing if we was gonna have it or not. My youngest daughter had already ate them all. We talking about it. Are you gonna discuss? You gonna eat it? You gonna try it? I don't know. Then we look they're at gone. Them, oh god, we're like, well, they're so good. <laughs> she was like, they good. We was like, <laughs> but that was so funny. Is is they get to experience the kid clubs? Yes, doing all the um excursions and all the things, and then at at night we would always meet for dinner and we would get all dressed up, and it was just really memories to make. Um, like you say, forever travel is, I think, one of the things, good or bad. Either right. You're going to talk you're about making the memories you and just making memories and just breaking that routine. I mean, we all get in a rut and just breaking that routine and getting out of getting out of your city, getting out of your home, getting out of where you do the day in and day out without thinking about it. It sparks a creativity, it opens your mind to new possibilities, to new ideas. Um, some of the best ideas that we've ever had as a family have come from when we were traveling, um, we have a nonprofit called Rewarding Responders that raises money and sends first responders and their families to Walt Disney World for an all expenses paid vacation. Um, and that came from we were in Walt Disney World with our family on a family vacation when we got news that an officer that we knew in our town was shot and killed in the line of duty. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I looked at my husband and said was, I wonder when the last time or if ever he's been able to take a family vacation with his kids and now he's gone. And so right then the idea was birthed to start this nonprofit to do that for families. And so we launched it. And then a year later, we were traveling with our first families. And one of them was the widow and the children of that officer. Mm -hmm. So it was it was definitely such a cool experience to see them make those memories and have those core memories made together um, as they learn to navigate life without their dad and without their husband. Um, but yeah, so just awesome. to just to see how ideas can be birthed when you get out of the norm and just get out there and do something different. Very, very true. Very true. And I love that the fact that you are giving them something to smile and a laugh about on a different, you know. Oh, yeah then just oh my gosh Disney World is a whole thing we've been so many times it's not even fun like I said again I don't want to experience any more of those until my grandbaby is ready and then we're gonna start again right because yeah. I have three kids that we done all oh too many times like too many too many times like I can never do another oh you can't go too many times oh we, my uh, husband and I we're just big kids we love Disney World no. so we'll, we we <laughs> Me too. But we got to remember, we are different age ranges. True. Right. And we went so many times like you and your husband, because my husband is a big child. We went so many times. Like, I think we went right after the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Or right before. But we've been there within the last. But I, that's when I said, OK, listen, listen, I can't come here again until my, well, I have a four-year-old grandbaby and an 11-month-old. So in a minute, they'll be ready. They'll oh, be yeah. Ready in just a minute, you know. By next year, we ready. Oh, yeah, for yeah, sure. We ready. Yeah, we ready. So it's not like I'm taking a big, huge gap. Let's be clear. Like, I'm like, I'm not going. I'm, I'm just taking a break. Right. But for Disney sure. World, we have been so many times. We loved it. We had so much fun. And I'm really, the, I am a big kid. I'm the one who really pushed those kids out the way so I could talk to Mickey Mouse. Right. I'm like, oh my God, Mickey Mouse. I run it's my turn just, with him. Girl, I just be pushing. I'm like, who in the hell? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it that's, is that's me. It's amazing. So let me ask you this. You know you are on Misfit One Lifestyles, and my whole platform is about living fit. 
That is focus plus intentional equals transformation. And I love how you focused on your career and what makes you happy and brings smiles to you and others in this whole travel industry. Um, can you tell everybody before I move on, how can they connect with you and find you? Definitely. So if you want to get started planning a trip, my website is Mallory Travels. Dot net. So that's the easiest way to get uh, in touch with me. The fastest way, my email contact info, how to submit a quote uh, request form for a trip is all right there. Um, so mallorytravels.net would be the fastest way. And then all of my social media handles are Mallory Travels. So if you want to follow along on my trips, you can there. Very cool. Very cool. So now how do you stay sane? I know you got three, you know, the three, the two kids and possibly three, four, five, you know, because that can happen at any moment. Right. But what does your self-care look like? Um, I am a big fan of HIT workouts. Ooh. I love the high intensity workouts. Those are my favorite kind. So we have a, a local gym here that does that. And so when we're home, that's where I go. Uh, I start my day that way. And if I can't get there in the morning, then I get there at lunch uh, to break up my day. But that that just brief high intensity training time uh, for my body really does help me stay focused on something that is not related to my business. It's not related to anybody else, but me right. and keeping my body in check, keeping my mind sane. Um, so that's one that I really enjoy when I'm traveling. I tend to run or I'll travel with like resistance bands, um, moving my body, lifting heavy things, doing stuff like that. That really does help me stay focused. Uh, so my physical routine is very important. And then mentally, I always like to have a good book on hand. So as long as I've got something that I can read and I like a physical book, my husband loves his Kindle and I think that's great. It's very convenient for traveling. And you would think I would be a fan of it because I like stuff that's compact. I like to travel in a backpack, but I love a physical book because I have no distraction. There's no see, tech. See, I'm with your husband. I would I <laughs> not read. I refuse that Kindle never in my life. Never. I need a book. I want to change the pages. I want to feel I'm in it. And then one time we was traveling and I had like three because I read them very fast because I get in the book and I'm like, oh, so uh, we were going for like two weeks and I wanted to make sure I had enough books. They were so heavy. They were so horrible. And then um, I got on that Kindle. And you never look back. Never look back. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God. And I was the one who fought. I don't even know how Kindle stayed in business until I got in here. Because I would refuse it. I was like, no, a book, a book. Now I'm with your husband. Don't do it. Don't do it one time. Because once you do it. I mean, you see my books behind me. I see all your books. And <laughs> I that's can't go back. Thing. I got so many books. What am I going to do with these books? Books in the closet, books in the get. I say, Lord, that Kindle is amazing. I am not going to say because I'm all for books, but your mental health is great because books do really, for me, take me to a different place. Yes, definitely. I love books. Um. So definitely uh, working out and reading are two of the biggest things that I do for, for self-care. And then I really enjoy just playing with my kids. Yeah. I love getting on their level and hearing their imaginations run wild and creating stories with them or playing in the yard and all of the things that, that, that is childhood. I just love it. And so getting on their level and being in their world uh, really is a form of escapism for me. So I get to just shut everything else out and be with them. And that that's probably why we love going to Walt Disney World so oh, yeah. much. I, I hear you 100%. I'm, I'm the same way. I'm, that's why my kids are very animated. My kids are very, they, they're fine. But it's so funny because I was that mom who was on the floor when we do it I do that with my grandbaby um um and she was like so surprised when I first did it like no yeah yeah you sit here because everybody sit and watch her play right like, uh I know I want to play I'm playing I want to be in a tent where my crown am I right too we she was like okay so now even the <laughs> get older and older she like come on yeah yeah I'm like, <laughs> my son laughs because she she's go go and I'm like I'm right there with her and then I'm like this 
<laughs> sad face where she doesn't look. He's like, oh, you started it. So yep. you keep going. So I really enjoy you being here. I mean, I have learned so much because the tips on being uh, a planner is so important. Yes. Uh, the information that you shared about pre and post pandemic cruising, that's really important in these days and how to make sure you can have memorable times with your family and really enjoy. And like you said, this could be the last moments. And, and then the fact that the nonprofit is even just mwah, chef's kiss because it gives people a chance to smile when they're having a hard time or going through a hard time. So I thank you very much for all that you do. Well, thank you for having me. It's been an absolute joy talking with you and just exploring all of these topics together. And I really have enjoyed my time with you today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But before we head off, do you have any last words of wisdoms for everybody? Take the trip. Take the trip. That's Boom. it. Drop Take my the trip. Take the trip. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. All right, guys. It's your girl, Elizabeth Colon, and I want you to live fit. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Misfit One Lifestyles. Listen, when you are fed up and sick and tired of living this stifled, overwhelmed, and overstressed life, and you're ready to live the fullest, richest, and healthiest life by gaining more confidence, more energy, and more clarity, living in your best self, you know what to do, right? Go ahead, go to my website, misfit1.com. Sign up for our online courses, Creating a Healthy Habit, so that you too can live fit. Focus, move with intention, and transform your life.